The purpose of this video is to provide an introduction to the kill sheet. Navigate to the screen by clicking the well control button, then by clicking the kill sheet button. We will start by breaking down the screen into various important elements. The main elements on the kill sheet screen are as follows. The kill sheet title bar, formation strength data, pump data, current well data, the deviated well toggle, and the page navigation buttons. In this tutorial, the well is shut in on a gas kick. The majority of the well data has been filled in. The kill sheet page reference displays the current kill sheet page as well as the number of available pages. The formation strength data shows the results of the last leak off test. The gray buttons can be clicked to manipulate the resultant data in the readouts. The pump data allows entry of slow pump rates and pressures. This data is populated throughout the kill sheet in various places. The current well data is displayed in this column. The deviated well toggle is used to configure the kill sheet for the additional calculations required for deviated wells. Click the checkbox to toggle to deviated well. The total number of kill sheet pages for deviated wells is 6. We will cover deviated well kill sheets in a future video. The page toggle controls which of the kill sheet pages is in view. Before navigating to the next page, please note the kill sheet title bar and navigation buttons are located across all pages. Click the right toggle button. Kill sheet page 2 displays the pre recorded volume data table. The table displays the pipe type, the length of a given pipe section, the capacity of the pipe in barrels per foot, the volume of a given pipe section, the strokes of a given section, the time to circulate that section at a reduced pump rate. Currently, the stroke and time calculations are using pump 1 at 30 strokes per minute. Select an alternate pump by clicking this button. Use the dialog to set the desired pump. Select the desired reduce pump speed by clicking this button. Use the dialog to set the stroke rate. Notice the update to the strokes and volume columns. Navigate to page 3 by clicking the right arrow. Page 3 contains the calculations for determining kill mud weight, initial circulating pressure, initial dynamic casing pressure, and final circulating pressure. Let's use choke line friction as an example. Navigate to page 2. The current pump I am using is pump 2 at 40 SPM. Next, on page 1, view the choke line friction for pump 2 at 40 SPM. Return to page 3 to enter the data. Click the button, then use the keypad to enter the proper choke line friction. The initial dynamic casing pressure readout updates with the correct value. Next, kill mud weight. Double check the kill mud weight calculation with a calculator. Check that the calculation has rounded correctly. Enter the kill mud weight. The FCP calculation is now complete. Navigate to page 4. Page 4 contains the drill pipe pressure schedule. This screen can be broken down into three sections. The graph area, the data area, and the add data button. The graph area displays pressure versus strokes data. To build the graph, you need to add data points. Click the add data button. The data area updates with two buttons, one for strokes, the second for pressure. You will see that the buttons already contain data. Let's figure out where the data is coming from. Navigate to the choke pump screen to view the current stroke count and shut in drill pipe pressure. The kill sheet gets the strokes and pressure data from the choke pump screen when creating data points. Watch as I zero the stroke counter. I will now create a second data point. This time, the button on the left shows zero. This is a great reminder to zero the stroke count. The first data point normally represents shut in drill pipe pressure. The second data point normally represents ICP. Return to page 3 to get ICP. Navigating back to page 4, enter ICP in the second data point. Create a third data point. The third data point is normally used to represent FCP. Return to page 3 to get FCP. Enter this data. You will need to know the amount of strokes required to get to FCP. This can be found on page 2. Update the FCP data.
Finally, if you want to give yourself some strokes for getting the pump up to speed, change the strokes for the second data point. As you can see, the drill pipe pressure schedule is now complete. If needed, you can create additional data points to suit your needs. This concludes the Killsheet tutorial. Thanks for watching.